what's up guys out here cleaning up the kayak figured i'd say hey and let you guys know that this is the bonus episode for the yakking for bass challenge we got on the video conference with adam glass who was this year's tournament challenge winner and we tried to record it and it turned out really well so i hope you guys enjoy All right, guys, so you are now listening to the Chasing Tales podcast. This is a bonus episode for everyone. I'm excited because we have got a dude who shattered the yakking for bass record. The dude just like, he was an animal this year. And uh, glad to have him on the show. Adam Glass, dude, what's up, dude? How are you feeling right now? Uh, not much. Uh, thanks, guys, for having me on. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, that's I've been excited from the beginning, so I really appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, man. I mean, you, you took the tournament by storm this year. I, what was your total inch? Like 150? No, it was 108 and 0.25, right? Yeah, I think it was 108 and a quarter. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's like uh, one of my dinks past where uh, the total was last year. So, uh, <laughs> pr pretty excited about that. Glad to see a Florida boy take it home last year because, Chase, who won last year? Last year it was uh, Anthony Winkleman out of right. Kentucky that ended That's up right. winning, but I think he he I think he had 102 inches and some change. So uh, I knew if we had somebody good from Florida come on, that 102 <laughs> wouldn't even cut it. Somebody other than so, us, and and it was proved. <laughs> so I mean, I was I, I was close to fish away from 102 this year, but I I don't go out and bass fish that often. I mean, Anthony Winkleman fishes for the. Uh, kayak bass fishing and I think he was yeah. in a Hobie tournament this year yeah. and he I, I think last year he just happened to see our tournament on tourney x and signed up for it didn't even know about the podcast or anything like that so I thought that was kind of cool but yeah he was also a a ringer <laughs> in the match <laughs> with a lot of uh Joe Blows <laughs> trying to keep up yeah yeah, for sure. I, I, you're right. You hit the nail on the head. We knew that this year, if somebody from Florida who knew what they were doing was to register, we, you know, it, it would be domination. And that's exactly what he did the entire tournament. So I, I'm curious, man, what was your mindset going into this month long tournament? Did you, did you feel like you could win? Did you know you could win? What was your game plan? Uh, well, it's funny you mentioned that. I had mentioned to Chase um, about the middle of this tournament that it actually, it kind of humbled me. Um, because uh, before I ever registered for the tournament, I had the mindset that I was going to come in and catch a bag full of seven pounders and have 115 inches um, in the first couple weeks. Uh, and I was really, really wrong. Uh, it was it was a lot of fishing, a lot of hard work. Um, and you guys said a lot of nice things about me there, but um, every time I fished with Chase, uh, he, he ended up whooping my butt. So... Um, it it uh it wasn't necessarily that I just really knew what I was doing. I, I just I got lucky. I got on the fish. Um, I had a few really good tips uh, from people, um, and it, it just worked out. I mean, yeah. Go ahead, Chase. No, I was gonna say, if Walter remembers before the tournament started, I texted him and I said, I think Adam Glass is going to win the tournament. Did I not <laughs> yeah. send you that text? You did. <laughs> I, if, if we could have gone back and I could have gone back on the podcast and said that, then I would have sounded like I knew what I was talking about. But yeah. I did send that text out before just because – why don't you give everybody a little uh, history or your background in uh, bass fishing, Adam? Yeah, I mean, so um, I grew up fishing. Um, it's uh, definitely definitely a passion of mine. My dad was a freshwater fishing guy way before I was born. Um, so by the time I was around, he wasn't a guide anymore. But um, – he, he was a guide for about five years uh, right here in the Central Florida area on, on the river. So, of course, uh, he taught me how to fish growing up. Did a lot of live bait fishing. Uh, that's kind of my, my main thing. Uh, but I, I just took it from there. And also, somehow or another, I inherited a really competitive gene. Uh, so when I was like 14, I entered a tournament on the river. and went out there with my cousin. And uh, uh, we, we got... We, we got destroyed. Uh, we didn't even catch a limit that day. We had three fish for like seven and a half pounds. And I think we came in seventh place. Um, but so I, I've always been competitive and I've always loved to fish. Um, and being here in the, the Central Florida area, I definitely had a, 
at a, a huge advantage um, in that sense because we have we have a lot of a lot of really good fishing around here. That's awesome. Man. Yeah, and that that's part of the reason why I was like, he's got a good shot. I mean, just because of the area that you're in. I don't know how many lakes are down in that area, but there is a lot more, <laughs> than, <laughs> even in my area here in Florida, at least like local lakes and stuff that are within like a 20 or 30 minute drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, but yeah I, live I, in, uh, I live in Lake County, uh, actually. So uh, I forget, but I think <laughs> there's funny. over a thousand, a thousand named lakes in Lake County. And uh, yeah, a lot of several of my fish came from lakes that were within 10 minutes of my house. So. How many of those lakes are they naming after you now? Uh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think any of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we mentioned that it was a grind, and it, it always seems to be a grind because it took you up until, what, the last week to finally catch your fit, fish over 20 inches. I mean, you had a great bag before that, and I got to commend you because you definitely ground it out. Uh, I can definitely tell that you're competitive because, I mean, you went down to Felsmere with me twice. I mean, we had to wake up. I had to wake up at like 2 something o'clock in the morning. You were waking up at 3.30 in the morning uh, just to get to Felsmere uh, to get on that uh, early, uh, like, top water bite. But it always seems like in Felsmere that it doesn't really pick up until, what, like 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning anyway. So I don't even know why we got there that early. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's definitely, it's always good to see even the person that was at the top and there really wasn't anybody close to catching you at that point, but you were still out there trying to stick, uh, that fifth fish that was, uh, over 20 inches. Yeah, I, I, I had a goal I'd set for myself. Um, I, I knew I wanted to break 105, um, and I had 104 and three quarter going into mm -hmm. last week. So, uh, I knew that I wanted to do something uh, to break that. We went down to Felsner that last time. and uh, I still didn't break it. And so uh, I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop by. And this was like three days before the tournament was over, um, if I'm correct. And I'm like, I'm going to stop at a little lake on the way home. And I did that. And, uh, I mean, it was, it was about, I don't know, 20 minutes before dark. Uh, I stuck that big fish. Um, he came up and shook his head and got off. And I was just devastated. I'm like, I have like three days left to fish. I had a chance of the biggest fish I've hooked this whole tournament. Uh, it was like a six pounder and it got off. Uh, and I kid you not, it was like three casts later. I stuck that six pound, two ounce fish that was 23 inches. Uh, I mean, within 10 or 15 yards of where I had just lost the first one. Uh, and so, you know, that it was, it, it was definitely a grind. Um, it was just like one fish, a trip. Uh, if that, there were a lot of trips where I didn't call anything, and I'd go catch a bunch of fish, but it wasn't a numbers game. It was, you know, it was about getting that one or two big bites every time you went. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's that's kind of the benefit of your month long tournament. You know, there's several of them. Jason, I've always said that these tournaments really benefit the the fishermen across the border, fisherwoman, angler. There, there's there's the word I'm supposed to use uh it, it benefits the angler across the board because you've got so much time you know it, it might be that you know between wind rain snow sleet whatever you might only get one good one good uh go at it or it, it can play out in your way where you can just go out there and try and upgrade one fish at a time and that's a little different mental game right like it's not all hinging on the the one eight hour moment you've got in a, on a weekend tournament yeah, I mean, if you're if you've got one day and you've got eight hours, you know, you're going out there with the mindset of, you know, first thing is catch five fish. Um, you know, you've you've got to put five fish in the boat before you can really start thinking about upgrading. Um, and then after that, it's like, all right, now we're trying to get that, that big kicker. Whereas in the month long tournament, um, you know, maybe for the first few days, I was like, let's just get a good bag going here. Sure. Then after that, it, it was just, um, you know, I, I wanted just every time I went. I was targeting big fish. I wasn't necessarily targeting a bunch of fish. Right. Yeah. I think that first day or two you get out there, you just want to catch your five and have just like a decent number up yeah. on, the, up on yeah. the board. But even that, like I was telling Walter, so I was like, why, why am I even measuring 15 and 16 inch fish? Like at, at the end of the day, they're, they're not going to matter at the, to be at the top of the leaderboard i yeah. mean even even if you put five 16 inch fish you're still 28 inches 
off of where first place ended up this last year. But I mean, it's still fun to put the fish up there. But that being said, when you're putting up, when you're just adding a quarter inch at a time, heck, there was a time I caught a fish that was a quarter inch upgrade and I just threw it back in the water because I was like, I'm not even close to the top. What's yeah. this quarter inch going to do for me? I need some, I need some slabs. <laughs> and then I, I eventually started catching some decent ones. But uh, yeah, but it, it does, it is fun though when you get an upgrade when you go out, obviously, because there was probably a two week window in there that I could not catch an upgrade just just could not do it like yeah. every fish would be uh, my biggest fish i'd go out and catch would be the same size as my smallest fish or whatnot so it, it's definitely a grind and i don't know how how long was it in between your your like well yeah i guess you, you caught a very small upgrade when it fell's mirror uh the first time and then you didn't catch another upgrade until like a week later to uh beat that right yeah i had that one half inch upgrade um that I paddled like 10 miles for that day. And, uh, and, and then, uh, yeah, it was like a week before I, I posted a, another, another good upgrade. I didn't have a whole lot of, uh, a lot of trips in between those two, those two Felsmere trips. I tried out a couple local places around, uh, yeah, well, I just, I just moved in, uh, into a veto, uh, for, for a little while, while I'm doing an internship. But, uh, so I tried a couple places out around here and, uh, it was, it's not like places back in uh, Lake County, that's for sure. Right. Well, uh, what do you contribute your success to other than just going out and grinding it out? Did, did you have any go-to baits or yeah. uh, strategy every time you went out there? Or was it just fish as much as possible and try to get that fish? Yeah, I mean, there were definitely a few strategies. Um, I know summer fishing is, is something that I – I hadn't done a whole lot of until a couple years ago and I started doing it and trying to learn, you know, why is it different? Cause it, it does, it's not the same pattern as, uh, as if you're catching them in, in the fall or winter pre-spawn, all of that. Um, and so I started, I started realizing you had to adjust a few things if you're going to have success. So, um, I tried, but mainly I would try to be there as early as I could. Um, my, a lot of my big bites were either really early or really late. Um, and, uh, other than that, like as far as baits, you guys know, I, I threw that swim bait a lot and I went into counting, I think three of my five, uh, fish in my bag came off of a paddle tail swim bait and, uh, you can just cover a lot of water with it. And if you're looking for, you, you know, you're going to catch a lot of fish on it, but, uh, somewhere in there, you're going to catch a good one too. Other than that, another one of my, um, uh, one of my tactics was, picking up that punching rod. It's really hard to do out of a kayak, but it is a rush when you pitch in that highest mat and you feel that tonk and you're in a kayak, it's a completely different feeling. Um, and it actually didn't end up being a, a factor really, like I thought it was gonna be. I did a lot of it and I caught a lot of fish, but just how it worked out, um, I don't think any of the fish in my bag ended up coming from, uh, coming from that. They all came off of some sort of moving bait covering a lot of water. Um, I had one come off a chatter bait. That was one of my first big fish. Um, and, uh, I caught one, uh, I think one was on like a, a deep diving crankbait or something. I can't remember, but then the other three were all off that, that paddle tail swim bait. That's awesome. You know, I, I think in Florida, people don't realize just how much cover we have. You know, I've got buddies who during the tournament, you know, they're checking in with me. They're talking to me about, Oh, you need to throw, throw a big Texas worm big old like old monster it's like where <laughs> you know some of these legs is <laughs> it weightless you know and, and you say weightless and they look at you like you're nuts it's like you know basically i told I tell everybody consider that the vast majority of the lakes i fish have two feet of water and then nothing but thick grass underneath you know unless you're punching you know which you kind of have to do with some targeting precision that you you kind of ex explained that to me you don't just you know throw everywhere that there's points to key in on and whatnot um, you, you're kind of limited with what you can throw, but that daggum paddle tail, dude, it's weedless. You can zing it a mile. Um, it just, it, it invokes reactions. I had a couple fish hammer it, but just not, I think just maybe I, I ripped it out of their mouth uh, during the tournament, but I'm a sucker for a frog and all this cover. I just, I can't get away from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that actually, I just remembered that other, um, the other, it was a frog that I caught that one on. And that was that one uh, in Lake Yale. 
that I caught like the day before uh, Chase came down and fished it with me. Um, it, w it was a topwater frog. Um, and it, it was literally, it was topped out hydrilla, um, just slop. Uh, they had actually come in there and sprayed it. And I had got, gotten in there just before all the fish left. So the hydrilla was just starting to die, but there was still a lot of fish in it. So it was just kind of like slop on top. And uh, I, I just bombed it out over this thick, thick mat. And it got to this one little hole and uh, she just engulfed it. And uh, I mean, instantly I was hung up in like 50 pounds of grass and I had to just paddle over to her and lip her, um, which is actually about the best thing that can happen in all that hydrilla is yeah. they just get hung up right there on top and you just paddle over to them. Um, but yeah, it's so much, there's so much cover in Florida and whether it's hydrilla, uh, big bull lily pads, uh, you know, when I'm punching, I, I don't typically punch like, um, like hydrilla and stuff like that. I know some people do that, but I kind of key in on the, on the floating mats uh, that are clear underneath. So like uh, water hyacinths, water lettuce, uh, stuff like that but it, it's just there's a solid cover everywhere we don't have the you know deep points and you know offshore structure as much um you know where there's guys out there in 40 foot of water throwing drop shots at like brush piles like you get in some of the some of the northern states but uh we just have so much shallow water cover yeah yeah right. the, the lakes themselves aren't necessarily shallow but the vegetation in essence makes them that way it's mm -hmm. it's weird to describe to people Right. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that you caught a bunch on swim baits. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think that I actually caught a fish that was in my top five with a swim bait. Um, I caught, I think, two on the whopper plopper, one on a chatter bait, and then the other two were actually on worms that I ended up uh, catching my stuff on. Now, I did that second time we went out to Felsmere, I did lose a giant fish on the swim bait. I just didn't get it hooked good. Like it was one of the, I just threw it and let it sit for a second. Cause I was trying to adjust something in my kayak. And then I started to reel and I was like, I thought I was in some grass and I was like, Oh, I'm in some grass. So I just kind of just kept reeling. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait a second, it's moving. And then I start reeling and then this fish comes out of the water. And I mean, it was just a giant. I would think it was around seven or eight pounds, but who knows? It could have been a four pounder, but it definitely looked like it was seven or eight pounds. Uh, just a fat fish, just one's like where they come up and they're just wobbling and they can barely jump out of the water type deal. Like it barely got out of the water, but I could see it. And I was like, oh yeah, that's a big fish. And then 10 feet from the kayak, it comes off. And I'm like, well, there went my chances to break a hundred <laughs> inches right there. <laughs> oh, there went my hundred inch chance right there. But I, and I honestly, like I said, that, that was a fish that would have put me up believe in second place there's no there's no doubt in my mind I would have been in second instead of fourth uh from that fish but didn't happen but uh I had uh, the best part about this tournament was is uh, I think I finished around eight last year and this year I ended up fourth place and then Walt made a huge improvement uh from last year uh why don't you talk about that a little bit Walt is uh, your huge improvement from last year yeah I mean <sighs> It's kind of a low bar. Last year sucked for me. I mean, I, I registered one fish at 18 inches and had three available slots at the end of the, uh, the, the tournament. Um, so it, it's one of those things where I went into this tournament trying to figure out how I can place with five 15 inch fish. That was kind of my goal. Um, you know, just trying to, to, to make that marginal improvement because last year I ended with three fish under 12 inch, or 13 inches. And that was just, that was painful. I think it was like 18, 16 and a half and then a bunch of freaking like dinks. Um, honestly, I didn't change much if I'm being completely frank because I stuck with the frogs. Um, what I mainly did was I upgraded some of my tackle. I had heavy action rod and my theory on this, everybody's got a different theory. That's the cool thing about everything outdoors is everyone's got a good BS theory on why their system works better than everybody else's. And I got a seven foot five, uh, seven foot four heavy action rod because my theory is you know you lose so much leverage with the kayak when you go to set that hook um you know medium heavy kind of acts a lot like a medium and uh what i found last year was i was able, wasn't able to get those fish out of the pads they wrap up around the pads and that was the end of it and so this year i got a nine three one ratio which is a little bit hot i know i'm probably going to catch flack for that that's, that's above what most people recommend 
Um, and then I got a heavy action rod, just kept with the same frog system, the same hook system, barely changed any of that. And the difference this year was when they, when, you know, I was a little more patient too. When I would, you know, let, let him start to swim off of that frog, that topwater frog a little bit before I'd set that hook. I never missed a fish and I never lost one. I lost a couple at the side of the boat that were just barely hooked. Um, maybe I snatched those too early, whatever. It is what it is. But um, put, uh, I think I put 89, 88 inches on, whereas last year I think I, I, I sat somewhere around like the high 60s. Um, so I, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I, I feel like I lost one night. You talk about getting on those runs. One night I lost like three fish in the span of 15 minutes. Um, I, I don't know if maybe it was, it was pitch black when I, when I got on these fish. But I don't know if I was jerking too quick. I don't know if uh, – I know I tried to freaking boat flip like a 19-inch bass. I don't know what I was thinking when I did that. But he obviously spit the hook and, and went back in the water. But um, I probably could have – maybe punched into those high 90s because all three of those fish when I set the hook they were like reminding me that they were there on a heavy action rod and that that tends to be a pretty good indicator because that night that you and I were bass fishing and I caught that 18 and a half dude I just I winched him right across the surface to me so they had to have been pretty you know decent fish right so well uh Adam why, why don't you tell everybody about your uh your favorite experience during the challenge Oh man, I probably should have prepared something for this. Uh, I, I don't know, man. Felsmere was a blast. Um, I don't know. I think that first first trip, especially when when Nick was there with us too, I, we had a we had a good time. Um, so that 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 was. I mean, we caught a lot of fish. Um, I only had that one upgrade, but uh, we just caught a lot of fish and good fish too. I mean, we weren't catching dinks. They were they, they were good fish and. I, I kind of joked about how um, what what the worst part about fishing a tournament is fish that you would normally be like just you know just hyped to catch. Uh, now you're kind of like bummed because it doesn't help you. You know it doesn't help you at all in the tournament. <laughs> but we, we had a lot of fun and caught a lot of fish. Um, we got caught in like three three just massive rainstorms. <laughs> so that that was an adventure. Um, so I don't that it was it's probably that probably the Felsmere trip. Uh, besides that, I, I know that catching that that last minute six pounder, right after losing that <laughs> that, that six pounder, that that's that's pretty great too. I mean, I I can't uh, I can't get over that one. <laughs> right. Yeah. That that's always fun when you can. Was that your? Because that was your biggest fish, right? Yeah. It was it was the longest and weighed the most. I had. I'm pretty sure I didn't weigh the one fish. I'm pretty sure every fish in my bag was over five pounds. Um, but uh, I know that was definitely the biggest. Uh, I had a five and a half. Well, it wasn't quite five and a half. It was like five pounds, seven ounces. Um, and then I had that one that was just over six, six pounds, two ounces. So, yeah, that was by a good bit my biggest. That's right. awesome. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was a fun trip. Uh other than I just had a slow paddling kayak because <laughs> mine's the uh, high rise kayak and I couldn't <laughs> take it. So they were calling it a bathtub all day. I mean, I was giving it, he's like, give it all you got captain. And I was giving it everything I had had from those guys. And then you and Nick were just like barely paddling. And then y'all would just be scooting past me. And I'm like, yeah. man, this is ridiculous. And it would just, it was even compounded when we had to pretty much paddle like four miles on the way back in that evening. And then it, it was like a, kind of like a slow drizzle the entire way so we were getting wet by the time we actually met i think i don't know how long it took us to get back but it took a while to get back yeah, it was, was over an hour yeah. and, uh, <laughs> he's like i kept looking at my clock it was exactly at least yeah. an hour <laughs> we we were and of course we're all stoked um just from getting drenched three different times because it yeah. that first rain it was good but then the sun came out and we were dr we dried up quick after that first rain but then about an hour later here comes another one and then about an hour later here comes another and we're not close to anywhere to get back <laughs> at all so uh, but it was a great time I, I had a good time uh, I, caught, I think I got a couple of a couple of upgrades that day but then I even ended up that that second trip was probably the best because I think I caught three upgrades that day just uh, on that second trip that we had and we only stuck it there for uh, half well till till noontime so we still had there was still plenty of fishing left, but 
uh, yeah, I think that that was a good time and getting to fish with you and uh, Nick, that was probably one of my, my favorite moments. And then the other one would probably be night fishing with Walt, man. I got him out on the water. I had to like, literally pushed him like hey dude let's go out let's go night fishing i'll make the drive i drove whatever it was a two-hour drive it to was. get there I, i'd never been on that lake uh and we went out had a good time i had a ton of blow-ups on that sprinker that tackle sprinker frog i don't even want to talk about that but uh he was big and walt, but but walt got <laughs> i mean you got what three upgrades that one night yeah and that got you a third in the creators just just yeah. from going that night if you went to gone then wouldn't have happened no, no, it, uh, you can, the, that, the one downside to a month long tournament is you can exhaust yourself. And I was kind of there. I mean, it was, I fished really hard. I was fishing uh, most afternoons after work and, um, you know, it, it's difficult balancing everything. And, uh, I was done. I had just written it all off and she's like, come on, man, come on. And I, I looked at my wife, like, tell me I can't go. And she's like, if you want to, you can. I was like, dead gun. Well, <laughs> So, I, Adam, I got a question for you, dude. This year you caught, I pulled it up while you guys were chatting, 23, 22, 21.75, 21.5, and 20 inches even. So, you know, I look at this and I think, how's this man going to top it? And I'm curious, next year when we host this, you're, you're going to be involved again. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious, what is your goal next year? How do you plan on breaking 108.25 inches? Man, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I think I got a few tips, uh, this year. I think I learned, um, learned what to do and what not to do and kind of where to spend my time and where not to spend my time. Uh, cause you know, just like you said, it's easy in the month long term to get burnt out. And I definitely felt that, uh, after the first week. I mean, that first week I fished so hard. I was like, I, I don't even want to think about fishing. Uh, so I, I think just, you know, trying to be smart with where I spend my time. It's going to be hard. I mean, 108, that's – I was definitely happy with that bag. Um, I mean, maybe I shoot for 110. We'll see when it gets close. Um, but, man, that's going to – I'm going to have to have a couple of big kickers to, to hit 110, that's for sure. Yeah. No, yeah, that's the well, name of the game, but I get, well, he's going to be a creator next year. He's going to be, yeah, I was, yeah. I was going to, yeah, took words right out of my mouth, Chase. He's going to be a creator. So you, uh, you know, if you're, if you're feeling blue about the fact that uh, the dude on, on the, the, the podcast right now whooped your butt, don't worry about it. Cause we pulled him from the competition pool, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which we're probably going to come to regret. Cause that, that it really uh, puts chasing tails at a disadvantage. I don't know how we're going to, you know, pull, pull gold again next year. It's going to be tough. No. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll, just go fish I'll just, I'll just make sure I fish with them every time. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that seems to be the key because every time you fish with me, <laughs> you absolutely destroy me. So. Uh, except for that day at Yale, but, but uh, oh, yeah. I don't think that yeah. counts. I caught like two dinks. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, right. that was the day I was using a frog and had like ten blow ups and couldn't. I can't. I, I just don't even want to throw a frog anymore. Yeah, uh, frog. Frog's my nemesis. But if I ever get the frog figured out, <laughs> well, at least the 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 popping style frogs or the right. soft body frogs, the the rivet frogs and stuff. I think I'm just gonna just go with that, man. I would. The hookups are way better. Yep. Uh, on the uh, rivet style. Don't tell him that. Frogs. We need to hold that in our back pocket, man. You got to keep that on the DL. Hey, man. You and I, we have we have an ally of the podcast that I'm going to pick his brain, and yeah. I'm every and I'm going to get up with him next year. And yeah, it's, right, it, we are. We've got a way to for us to be first and second. Yeah, uh, I'm right. It's, it's just going to be it's just going to be it's going to be tough, but I think we can do yeah. it. Well, I think we get Felsmere. You'd be there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, yeah. well I, I've, I've, I've already got a week long to yeah. stay there. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say. <laughs> All right, man. Well, listen, congratulations on your win. I, I appreciate you jumping on the podcast. Hopefully, we can have you on Talk Deer Hunt here soon because yeah. uh, as we sit right now, we're 71 days away from deer season for Georgia. A little, little different for, for Florida, but huh? I said it's getting close. It is. Yeah. It is. So, uh, we're going to start highlighting some guys who are getting it done here in central, northern, south, southern Florida. It's going to be a good time. So, appreciate you jumping on, man. Why don't you tell everybody where they can find you and everything that you produce? 
Uh, yeah, uh, thanks guys for having me on. Like I said, you know, this, this was, uh, this was the goal. Uh, I was super stoked to come on the podcast with you guys. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, but I, I do, I have a, I have an Instagram uh, and a YouTube. Uh, it's Central FL Outdoors. So if, uh, if you're interested in seeing, uh, seeing the little videos I make, you can, uh, you can find me on YouTube uh, at Central FL Outdoors. Uh, and on Instagram, same thing. Uh, whose name is just at Central FL Outdoors. And I have a link uh, in, my, in my Instagram to my YouTube, too. So you can find me that way. Right on, man. Right on. Well, guys, Chasing Tales, if you would do me a favor and go subscribe. Go subscribe to uh, what Adam's doing. He's a good guy. Can't wait to have him in the tournament this year. Can't wait to hopefully hunt with this fellow this this fall as well, which will be a blast. So until next time, you guys, you get outside and enjoy the great outdoors.